Have you ever wondered that how can a huge and heavy metal tube such as an aircraft uh, get airborne and fly and defy all the laws of gravity and stay up there without falling? Well, in this video, I'm going to be explaining just that. I'm going to be explaining how an aircraft, in spite of being such heavy, how it flies and how it, uh, you know, maneuvers and how it climbs and descends and turns. So all of that sort uh, on this uh, video of the ground school section of the flight tuber. So if you guys are ready, fasten those seat belts because we are ready for takeoff. and welcome back to the flight tuber flying simplified through YouTube. My name is Elias Kurt and on this channel I talk about interesting aviation facts and aircraft knowledge uh, and obviously some informative explanation of aircraft theory how aircrafts fly. So uh, if you are new here and if you're interested in such aviation related videos then you might want to consider subscribing. Aircrafts are one of the largest and one of the heaviest vehicles used for transportation out there. Just for a reference sake, uh, an empty Airbus A320 aircraft can weigh up to uh, 40,000 kilograms. That's known as an operating empty weight or OEM of an A320. So 40,000 kilograms, even if the aircraft is totally empty, without any baggage, without any cargo, without any passengers or fuel, for example, it still can weigh up to 40,000 kgs. Can you imagine that? And this is just an Airbus A320. If you talk about an Airbus A380 or 747, these aircrafts are even uh, larger and very, very heavy than an A320. But still, these guys are still flying and they, uh, they really get up to even higher altitudes than an A320 does. So if you are now getting more and more curious as to how such a heavy metal tube uh, an aircraft can defy the laws of gravity, take off and then reach such great uh, heights of 40,000 plus feet. Uh, this video is exactly uh, explaining that thing. Uh, so make sure to watch the video the entire length. And obviously, if you're getting value out of this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. Let's get into the stuff. So there are four different forces that an aircraft always experiences. And these are in four different directions. If you look at an aircraft from a side one perspective, uh, the first of the forces is weight, which acts straight beneath. Obviously, weight is self-explanatory. This is because aircraft is under the influence of Earth's gravitational pull. And that is the force that acts downwards from the CG of the aircraft. That is weight. The next force is thrust and this force acts in the forward direction and it pushes the aircraft in the front direction and these big guys here the engines are responsible for generating this force and pushing the aircraft in the forward direction some aircrafts have two engines some have four there are some single engine aircraft but nevertheless uh, the uh, main reason and the main responsibility of engine is to push the aircraft in the front direction the third force is drag which acts in the opposite direction of the flight of the aircraft so in the backwards direction and that is because of the resistance the air resistance that aircraft uh, is exposed to. So when an aircraft is flying through air, since it has got a surface area that is presentable to the airflow, to the air, the surrounding air in the atmosphere, it experiences uh, a, a backward force which is known as drag. Just, just imagine that if you're sitting in a car and you throw out your uh, hand out of the window, your hand will be pulled backwards, right? This is exactly the same force known as drag. And then the final force which acts vertically upwards is lift. And that is the main reason which uh, because of which the aircraft gets airborne. And as you might have guessed by the name itself, lift uh, lifts the aircraft upwards. And in this video, we're going to be explaining how we get and achieve that fourth force that is the lift. All right, so there are different factors that define as to how much lift can be produced and how they change. But for the simplicity's sake and for this video's sake, uh, I'm going to be explaining the two main factors. One is the speed. We need the speed. The more speed the aircraft is in, the more lift force it is generating. And then the second one is depending upon the aerodynamics or the fluid dynamics of the aircraft, the shape of the wing. So the shape of the wing of an aircraft is known as an aerofoil. This is taught in 11th or 12th class physics. And that is one of the important answers to many of the people who ask the question in the comment section that why why is uh, maths and physics important in class 11th and 12th? There you have it, my friend. Uh, you've got to learn about Bernoulli's principle, about aerofoils and aerodynamics and, and a lot of calculations in maths. So yeah, they are important, but that's uh, some other video. But yes, aerofoil is the shape of the aircraft. So what is the important thing about this shape is that the shape exploits the mother nature. It exploits the 
air surrounding us to generate the lift that is the vertical force right and how uh, let me quickly explain it to you with a diagram if you look at the shape of the wing of an aircraft from the side on perspective that is the cross-sectional uh, shape of the wing of an aircraft it will not be a flat rectangular shape instead it will be of a shape of something known as an aerofoil and this is what basically an aerofoil looks like all if you 12th class guys or 11th class guys you guys know what I'm talking about here okay so this is the shape of an aerofoil that is the shape of an aircraft obviously this is not a precise one and uh, you know engineers have come up with some really innovative shapes but this is the general principle uh, behind which all the aerofoils uh, are designed uh, what is the main thing about this aerofoil is that it exploits the airflow uh, flowing over it to generate lift how let's quickly look at it so as for the shape of an aerofoil itself and from now on i'm gonna refer to an aerofoil as a wing so if you look closely at the shape of a wing itself uh, the bottom portion of the wing is fairly a straight line and the top portion has a curvature to it that it's that is it's curved and what does basically geometry tell you it tells you that the bottom part is a shorter distance while the top part is a larger distance since it's curved uh, well that reminds me of another video that i had made recently on why a craft take a curved path rather than a straight one uh, uh, i'll link that video up here and also in the description so make sure to check that video out but in this shape of the wing for example if it was flowing through the air air is coming from that direction okay if you look at it from an aircraft's view aircraft is moving forward engines do that but that's another video uh, the air flow the air particles come and hit from this direction and as soon as they hit the leading edge or the front portion of the wing this the air splits into two different portions the portion that is going from beneath has to cover a fairly shorter distance than the portion that uh, you know uh, split and it uh, covers the distance from the top portion we have just uh, now looked at it right now since the air that is flowing from the top has to cover a larger distance in the same amount of time obviously speed is distance by time right if you apply that theory here then it will have to speed up meaning the air that is traveling from the top part of the wing is traveling at a higher speed than that flowing from beneath the wing what that means is there is a difference in speeds and obviously another thing that physics tells us is that uh, if the speed increases then the pressure reduces this is uh, one of the applications of Bernoulli's principle once again this is another good example of uh, why f maths and physics is important in your class 11th and 12th for example anyways a fairly simple experiment which is also the example that shows and implicates why uh, increase in velocity decreases pressure is that and this one you can try out at your home as well as suspend uh, with the help of two strings suspend two different thermocall pieces for example and then blow air in between these two and since the air outside these is still and the air in between them is at a faster pace there is a reduced pressure in between these two thermocalls than outside and you will actually look that these two thermocall pieces actually uh, come and touch each other and that is also one of the reasons why you are told to maintain certain distance distance from the approaching train on a platform because the uh, air closer to the train is at a higher speed and that will uh, result in a drop in pressure and it will suck you towards the train and you know uh, chances of an accident happening increases anyways which we have now implicated that the air flowing from the top of the wing is at a faster speed than that flowing from beneath because of which there is a lower pressure created on top and a higher pressure beneath because of which because of the pressure differential uh, the resultant force is lift which acts in the upwards direction and if you still are confused look at it in this simple way imagine that there is a door and two people are standing on each of the sides and pushing uh, on towards the door with as much force as they possibly can but if they both are equally strong then this door will not move at all but if one of the people were stronger then uh, he will be able to push on the door with more force and the door in a resultant thing will be the door will be moving towards the direction of uh, you know the weaker person so there's the same thing which is happening with an aircraft wing but just in this direction there is a uh, you know heavier force or a, you know a greater pressure beneath than above and in the resultant there is a lift which is produced in the uh, top uh, direction that is the lift force well this is just a very basic explanation of lift that i could possibly think of putting in that way uh, lift has got its own equation and derivations and a lot of those stuff that is what you'll be learning in the ground school so 
you know that is the difference between uh, actual professional ground school and this uh, video series let's continue so basically that is what is a lift force and how an aircraft flies is basically first of all we have to produce enough lift force such that it overcomes the weight the force that is acting downwards so once you do that once you balance out then there will no not be any net force and once you increase lift any further if the lift is basically higher than the weight then that uh, no takes the aircraft off and that's how we climb to higher altitudes but apart from all of these magic happening and you know aerodynamics and lift etc all of this is only possible if an aircraft is in forward motion remember all of that magic is happening only when an airflow is striking on the leading edge of the aircraft if that doesn't happen, nothing is going to happen. If the aircraft is standing still, nothing is going to happen. Aircraft won't lift at all. And that is where these beautiful engines come into picture. Their main responsibility is only to push the aircraft forwards. That is a whole another video. Maybe I'll be explaining about that in another video. And one last and very quick important detail that I wanted to tell you is that if you are imagining that we just need to, you know, speed down the runway and all of that magic will happen and aircraft will automatically get airborne. Obviously it will, but that will require a lot of runway and a really fairly higher speed. So what we do is, uh, you know, we use these elevators at the back of the aircraft. These are control surfaces that can move up and down. So we attain a certain speed and then we rotate the aircraft from the cockpit what I mean by that is these flight control surfaces deflect upwards, right? And what happens is the airflow hits them and then it gets deflected upwards. But because of that, the uh, there is a force downwards at the tail section and the uh, entire outcome is that the aircraft, you know, it's tilted upwards and then, you know, the wings can take on from there and we fly. If you still are confused, the easier perspective to put in and in this way is imagine that you are sitting in the car and you put your hand out of the window obviously please don't try this i don't want any uh, complaints <laughs> of you know injured subscribers please don't do that uh, just imagine that you're sitting in the car and you put your hand outside your window and till the time your hand uh, you are putting your hand level to the ground you know nothing is going to happen but as soon as you try to tilt your hand a bit in another direction okay as soon as you try to tilt your hand the air will come from that direction it will deflect below and then your hand will be thrown in that direction upwards similarly if you tilt your hand this way then the airflow will come here hit it will go up and then your hand will be pushed below same thing happens with uh, an, an elevator the elevators deflect upwards airflow comes strikes and goes upwards but the resultant force is beneath and you know the tail section goes down the nose section goes up and that is how an aircraft takes off such a heavy aircraft with all of those passengers with all of those crew and luggage and cargo fuel what all i told that is how an aircraft gets airborne uh, and i'll be explaining about uh, each of the flight control surfaces in another video uh, but that's it for today's video i hope that this one was uh, an informative uh, video and a good explanation and i hope that uh, you got value out of today's video if you like the explanation hit that like button subscribe to the channel and share this video with as many friends as possible i'll be coming up with interesting videos uh, further down the line until then take care and happy landings